Lord, who will lose income, oh God, because of this, oh God. So Lord, let not fear enter into our hearts, oh God. Ah, God, let not worry and anxiety enter into our hearts, oh God. But Lord, we trust fully and completely in you, for you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, and you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, and you are Jehovah to sick canoe, the Lord God, our righteousness, and you are God, our strong tower, and you are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord God, our banner, and you are the Prince of Peace, and the Great I Am, and all our sufficiency is in you, God, and we live and move and have our being in you, oh God. So Lord, we trust you in everything that is within us, oh God. I will trust you in the morning, we'll trust you in the noonday, and we trust you in the evening, God. We trust you, God, with all that you've given us, oh God. And we trust you with our children, and we trust you with our marriages, and we trust you with our ministries, and we trust you, oh God, with what we need, oh God. Ah, oh God, have your way in this place, oh God. Ah, oh God, take us from faith to faith and from strength to strength, and from glory to glory, oh God. Elevate our thoughts, God, that we might focus on who you are. Ah, you are a big God. You are a mighty God. You are an all-sufficient God. There's nothing too hard for you. Nothing is impossible for you, oh God. And Lord, you are God of miracles, signs, and wonders, God. You are God who makes the impossible happen, oh God. And Lord, I thank you that you sit high and you look low, oh God. I got it that you're perfecting everything that concerns our life, oh God. And everything that we have need of, you'll bring it into our life. So we say, Holy Spirit, have your way in this place on today. Holy Spirit, I have your way in our hearts on today. Holy Spirit, chase away every thought, oh God. Every fear and every source of every anxiety from our minds, oh God. And have your mighty way, oh God. Ah, oh God, we declare free reign in this place, oh God. We declare free worship in this place, oh God. Because our sins are forgiven and because we serve a great God. Ah, oh, anybody serve a great God? Anybody serve a God who's able to do anything but fail? Anybody serve a God who has made them more than a conqueror? Ah, oh, we celebrate you all today. Trust fully and completely in you all today, God. And we say, have your way like only you can. We say, do what only you can to do, oh God. And it's in Jesus' name that we celebrate you and who you are. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Give God some praise in this place. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't care if you're in this building or you're watching online, you have now entered into a sanctuary and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I don't care what faces us. I don't care what disease is attacking us. For God is faithful and he is good. He's good all the time. And all the time, God is. God is. God is. I wish I had a church. God is. Hallelujah. 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 I just dare you to pat yourself say, I came ready to give God praise on today. How many come to worship a great God on this morning? Because God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's go. If you feel like clapping, clap. If you feel like dancing, dance. If you feel like running, just run right now. All right? Listen. Everybody say, oh. oh.
We serve an amazing God and he's amazing today. Come on, everybody say how great is there. It's our God. Sing with me. Don't say this, say, say I lift my hand to give you glory. I lift my hand to give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I will praise. Say, yeah. Say, I lift my hand. So much I lift my hand to give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I will praise the name. I lift my hand because you're just that good.
God. Hallelujah. We're going to keep the praise. We're going to lift him up even more. Because today we're walking in, out of some graves today. We're walking out of our grave clothes and we're putting on the garment of praise. Is that all right on today? Hallelujah. So let's just praise him right here. says, I was buried beneath my shame, and who could carry that kind of weight, it was my turn, till I met you, listen, and I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I try to hide It was my tomb, yeah, yeah Till I met you Let's everybody say right there Say you call my name And what? And I ran out of anguish Out of the darkness Out of the darkness Into your an orphan but you call me a citizen of it when I was broken
Say right again. Say I am. I am free. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer no bound. Say no more chains no holding me. me. My soul is I'm resting. Say it's just a blessing. So praise. You gotta stay with us this morning. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Let's say it. Say, I am. I am free. Come on, Praise the say. Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer no bound. Say, no more chains no holding. Change holding me. My soul is My resting. Say,
know what it is about you believers, but it seems like the more pressure, the more praise. It feels like when the world seems to weigh down, our praise goes up. I feel like every time the devil tries to stop the people of God from the rising of the sun, from the rising of the sun, to the going down of the same. He's worthy. He's worthy. Listen. I was thinking, PC, the doctor was on TV talking about this virus thing, and he was walking out, and he was walking outside, and he was talking to the news reporter, and the news reporter said, hey, how can we protect ourselves from the virus? And he said, the doctor said, you know what? You know one thing that actually kills the virus is the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, we can be... He said the one thing that actually kills the virus are the UV rays from the sun. Now, I know they were talking about the SUN. Wait. And then I had to go look at what UV rays look like, PC. UV rays look like stripes coming down. I said, wait, those aren't UV rays. But he said that with my stripes, I'm healing some lands. And so I don't want you to have to worry about what's going on out there. Not because of the S-U-N, but because of the S-O-N that's sh shining down on us and with his rays. We have praise today. We can lift him up today in spite of what the world is seeing because Jesus is the light. <laughs> he is the light. And as long as we look towards the light, we will never be lost. We will never be lost. So let's continue with another praise to God because we see the light coming. We see the light coming today. Hey! Yeah. Everybody clap those hands. What a mighty, mighty God. Everybody clap those hands. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God we serve. Searching for what? 
My eyes could not see. Where to go next? And who could I say? No one but you. My hope is in Jesus. I can see the light here. I can see the light. 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 Say this won't last. Your word will come. Everybody clap, say, oh, 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 it's our victory oh, chant today. Oh, 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 Everybody oh, say, oh, 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 oh. It's my favorite part. Listen, so shine your light, your light on us. Shine your light. Oh, shine your light, your light on us. Shine your light on us. Shine oh. your light, Jesus. Oh, 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 shine your light, your light on us. Shine your light, Jesus. Let's have it. Oh, shine your light, your light on us. Shine your light on us, Jesus. Somebody 
tell the White House this won't last. This won't last. This won't last. This won't last. For God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Because if He promised, He said if He promised. That's all we're asking of you this morning is that you press, press your way through this with all the faith that you have because he calls you his child. So just continue to walk with him, continue to talk with him. And we're just going to continue to bless him this morning. So if you can't just raise your worship in this room. God, we love you, we love you. We're going to press our way into your presence because there's nothing like your presence. Hallelujah. This song says, I can just press, press in your presence. Behold the beauty of your face. If I can just press, press in your presence and never leave this place again. If I could just press, press in your presence and leave all my cares behind me, I will be whole, I'll still believe, and I will just lay right here at your feet. Say, I will be whole, I'll still believe, and I will just praise, praise at your feet. Say, 
right here in your presence. Come on, if you know there's nothing like the presence of God, lift your voice and say, right here in your God, this is where I want to be. So come on and sing the verse. If I could just breath, press in your behold the beauty of your I can just breath. Away. Never leave this place again. I could just press, press in your, leave all of my cares. I will be whole. I'll still believe. I will just lay, lay at your feet. I will be whole. I'll still believe. I will just praise. I will be whole. I'll still believe. I 
Come on, let's give God praise wherever you are. Come on. Now just stretch your hands toward heaven wherever you are. Father, we thank you so much. For our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We thank you for those who are here today and those who are watching via internet, recognizing God that we we need a word from you. Thank you for this worshiping experience. We're reminded of how awesome you are and how powerful you are. And God, we pray in these few moments, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, speak to our spirit. Give us the word we need that we will understand, God, that we're not to live in fear, but God, to walk in faith. Help us to trust you like we never trusted you before. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Come on, give it to him like you mean it. Amen. It's good to be in his house today and as well as some of us in our own homes watching. And that was the thing today. Make sure that you are where you feel comfortable to worship the Lord today. No stress today in understanding uh, it was not mandatory to be here, even if I had to preach to an empty building, just to make sure that you got a word through the internet, I would have done that. It, but we must understand that in this season, we are just trusting God. Amen, amen. It, it doesn't matter if you're at home watching via internet or you're in here. Nobody has greater faith because they're here. No one has greater faith because they're at home. We're just where we feel comfortable when we trust God right now. Amen. And that's what we say to those who are at home today. So we, we won't be saying, well, we got a bigger faith. No, that's not true. They're just following the orders of CDC right now. And we respect that. Tell your neighbor we respect that. Now, I said I wasn't going to have y'all to talk to each other. I'm going to say talk to yourself. Uh, so if I say talk to somebody, just talk to yourself unless it's your spouse or somebody you came with or somebody you trust. Amen. Amen. I want everyone to feel comfortable in being here. I was laughing uh, at the musicians over there because I noticed for the first time uh, Godfrey and Ike and, 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 and Jay, they, they, they got mics in front of them. And I was like, so I'm looking at the screen and I looked at Robert. I said, when they start singing. <laughs> If they can sing, I'm singing. I mean, y'all can't bar me from singing no more if they over there singing. So I'm just, I heard them sing. They can play now. They can play. But I've heard them sing. I'm just letting you know, I've heard them sing. And if they singing, I, I want a mic to sing too. Matter of fact, I want my mic hot every Sunday from this point on. <laughs> so I just want you to know. I'm like, what the devil? <laughs> And so uh, I just praise God that we all recognize this is a time that we honor and we trust God and we have faith. I had to switch messages uh, this week because uh, I'm in this series of stewardship and um, the word for today needed to be a word of encouragement. And, and, and so I, I had to hear God and pray. And God took me to a, a very familiar text that I've used not even long ago, but he showed me so many different things that was not for me to see until now. And so I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 5, start at verse 4. We're going to read verses 4 through 7. I know on the text up there they have verses 1 through 11, but really 
we're going to focus on verses 4 through 7 and just hear what God says. And I promise you, uh, it won't be long today, but I want to say something that will help us in this season. Amen. And, and so as we look at this, uh, starting with that fourth verse, it says, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, say it to yourself, at your word. Yeah, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Amen. Uh, I'm about to say, say to your neighbor, say to yourself, amen. Say to yourself, I have faith, I have faith. so I can't give up amen and and for a subtopic i want to say i have to be a good steward of god's word amen i have to be you may be seated i have to be a good steward of god's word I, i'm i'm so excited um as the praise team and men's choir and both of them are the best you could ever have in any church Amen. Come on, give God praise for them. I, 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 I was so elated as they were singing and they were saying, this won't last. Yeah, this, this won't last. Because um, before I came down first service, the Lord had me to handwrite that this season is temporary. Don't, don't panic. The information that we're receiving is for us to make changes. It's serious. We don't want to make light of it, but we're not to panic. Tell your neighbor, don't panic. We, we have faith. We have faith so we can't give up no matter what we're facing in life right now. We, we, we should not stop believing that we are prevailing with the God we serve. Sometimes, listen to this, we cannot control in life. We cannot control in life even while we're doing our best. Some things we just can't control. We can't control it. We're, we're doing our best, but we, we, we can't control it. Some things happen that shake us, but it should never shake our faith. We trust God, watch this now, to be faithful. God created us to be overcomers and conquerors. And overcomers and conquerors, watch this, need opposition to know that they can win. Life will sometimes knock us down. But it does not mean we are to stay down and live a defeated life. When life gives us a blow that knocks us down, we have to learn to trust God and follow a plan as he directs. Proverbs 21 and 5 says, the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. We have to follow the plan. The, the plan has been sent down from the federal government and from sent down to, to CDC to, to help us understand there are some things we ought to be doing in this season. So now, watch this now, it's not the season to give up or to be depressed, but watch this, to focus on the next move that's in the plan. Because if, if we're focusing on the next move and we're hearing from God, then we know that this will not always be like this. It's gonna change, tell somebody it will change. See, here's the challenge, the devil want us to get so overloaded with disappointment and fear so that we can't hear God. And what we need to recognize is that our breakthrough is just right around the corner. 
Every one of us will experience, watch this, or encounter difficulties and some, some type of setbacks in our lives. But the question is, watch this, how will you handle it? Will you persevere? Will you bounce back and try again? Because honestly, watch this now, the, the mark of a person of excellence is not seen in their accomplishments but it is in how they handle difficulties. See, God does not expect for us to give up. We cannot give up. We have to dig a little deeper into our soul and our faith and find strength to overcome, watch this, and build our faith. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 says, yet in all these things, tell somebody all these things. All these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You have to feed your faith and not your fears. Y'all hear what I'm saying here? So, so watch this. Now, that's the setup. Here we go now. Pastor won't be long today, but he'll be strong. Watch this. Those that are watching via internet and in here, we have to recognize in this season, we have to have faith. We, we see this here because the enemy wants us to hear everything and get locked in fear. But I see something here, watch this now, that, that, that some things that I didn't see in this text that I want you to see now. Number one, watch this, I've dealt with this before. I didn't say this, but I want you to hear this. Number one, sow an act of faith in this season. Look at your neighbor and say, sow an act of faith. Matter of fact, don't say it to your neighbor anymore unless it's your spouse or somebody you came with, amen. Say it to yourself. When I say say it to somebody, just say it to yourself, watch this. But so an act of faith. Let's look at verses 1 and 2, and I want you to see this. It says, so it was as the multitude pressed about him, here it is, to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Here it is. It, I, I, I'm, I'm blessed by this because as I'm looking at it, I, I just get excited thinking about what I see now and what the Lord showed me because everyone is gathering, listen to this, to hear the word of God because they recognize they need a word from God in this season. I'm, I'm excited about that because whether you're in the church or whether you're watching via internet, you have tuned in and you have come to church to get a word from God in this season. The Bible said that they were gathering around Jesus. Watch this now again. Why? So that you could feed your faith and not your fears. We need to recognize, watch this now as we look at this text. And we understand the history of it. We recognize that they, they fished all night and they didn't catch anything. It did, didn't go well last night. But see, now the, the Bible says that there, there are two boats that were sitting at the edge of the water. Watch this. Still in good working condition. And the fishermen were washing their nets. And that's something that, that begins to dig in me and dig in my spirit. And God said, look at it, look at it again. Because see, here's the challenge. Many of us, we need to recognize something here. We got to learn how to find some things to praise God about. What are you saying? In other words, you got to find a reason to give God praise in this season. What do you mean? You got to recognize that they still had two workable boats, boats that were still in good condition for them to go out there and fish again. All of the, although they did not catch anything last night, they still had the tools they needed to go back out there and do it again. Watch this now. Not only did they have the boats, but they also had the nets, which meant this, they were not finished. Tell your neighbor you're not finished. In other words, what I'm saying here, listen now, don't sit around and figure out or trying to say, well, I don't have this and this is going on and this is happening right now, this coronavirus. Listen, you got enough to praise God about regardless of what's going on right now. You need to look around and say, God, thank you for this. God, thank you for that. God, thank you for my family. God, thank you for my home. God, thank you for what you have blessed me with. Why? Because Psalms 145 Two through three says, every day, I will bless you. Wait a minute. Every day, every day, 
I will bless you. Even while there's a coronavirus every day, I will bless you. Talk to him, Kearney. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. I'm going to pause here because y'all look too quiet for me. I know they don't wore you out in praise. I should have cut them off at 1130. Watch this now. But you got to understand something. God is great. You know, look, tell yourself God is great. As a matter of fact, look up towards the heaven and say, God, you are so awesome. Sometimes you got to recognize, you got to find a reason to praise God. And you don't have to wait till circumstances are like we want them to be. We got to recognize just because God is, he is great. Come on, give God praise in here. They had boats that were in good conditions. They had nets still to catch the fish. But last night, sell your neighbor last night. Last night, there you go, just look at me when I say that. Last night, last night, they came up empty. I'm sure they were concerned because they were professional fishermen about their immediate future. They were preparing, though, their nets to go back to fish again. Tell your neighbor that is an act of faith. Yeah, just talk to me when I say that. Here we go. That's an act of faith. It didn't work yesterday. But I'm working on the nets because I believe this season is going to change. Woo, preach, Kearney. I'm sure they had questions as they were probably praying and working on the nets. I'm sure they had the how questions. How are they going to feed their families and how are they going to pay the bills? But they did not lay there and wonder. They were washing their nets. Not only were they washing their nets, but they were tightening their nets. They were making the knots tighter so that when they go back to fish, they, they would not listen to this. Now, no fish would be able to escape through the holes that were loose. They, they believed that things would change and things would get better. See, if you believe things would get better, you'll wash your nets. I'm talking to somebody in here. What do you mean? Well, 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 listen to this now. And this is where I got to go back to something. Reach back to what I said to you the last time. See, I told you before that the nets represent your mind. And if you have a, watch this, if you have, have to declutter, you have to declutter, you have to declutter your mind and tighten up your mind every now and then because you got to recognize a cluttered mind means cluttered spirit. Talk to me, somebody. And we got to recognize what the Lord wants us to do here is declutter ourselves so that we can hear from God. You hearing this? Now watch what Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 and 24 says. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, we can get some stuff out of our heads. We can get it out of our spirits. He said, and put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. See, we got to recognize I'm getting a new spirit in this situation. I'm trusting God like I never trusted him before. I'm washing my nets. I'm tightening my nets. I'm getting things together. Washing your nets. When you wash this now, when you did not catch anything last night, means that, listen to this now, that I'm washing in faith. I'm believing God to do something. That's why we must understand that when you have been inundated with information about COVID-19 or coronavirus, that, that, that some of us, watch this now, are feeling overwhelmed when we should use this information to be inspired your preach Kearney in other words we should take the information to be inspired this information should not be wearing us down we should have been washing our hands already talk to me somebody you should have been washing the doorknobs at your house already you should have been avoiding some crowds already can I talk sanitizing your home sanitizing the workplace sanitizing. we should have been doing that already we should have been taking care of the elderly already tell your neighbor already See, we should be inspired, not worn down with worry or fear. We should be inspired to do the right thing now. We should be tightening the nets. But for those of us who are being worn down with worry and fear, you should know the enemy used, watch this, useful information to sow seeds of doubt and fears when life is trouble. Y'all miss that. In other words, this is some useful information. Tell somebody this is some useful information. 
which means that you're not to be allow it to be used to sow fear in you. Not when you are a child of God and you are living by faith. You got to sow your faith now. You got to say, God, I believe you. I trust you. I recognize that I got to wash my hands every five minutes. I recognize I got to sanitize something. But you got to understand, I'm doing this in faith. Y'all miss all of that. I believe that you're going to work a miracle and all of this is going to go to pass. But I got to do my part too. Why? Because the Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 17, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have work, is dead. Talk to me, Kearney. You got to do something in the midst of this. Am I talking to anybody? Don't, don't get discouraged. I'm gone. I got to wash my hands again. Wash them hands. When we're disappointed, we must sow an act of faith and prepare to go back out there. The nets were loose, and I'm glad y'all are laughing. I love when you laugh. The nets were loose. They, they, the knots weren't tight <laughs> from being dragged below and snagged on the bottom, so they had to tighten them up. They're on the beach praying. And they're tightening them up. Listen, I got to talk to some of you. You cannot keep feeding yourself CNN, MSNBC, the local news all day. That will drag you down and weaken you. So that, watch this now, you might miss what God is saying or doing. I love 11 Alive News last night for their statement. They said they are promoting facts, not fear. Come on, give God praise for that. We need the facts. Tell somebody we need the facts. But you're not to live in fear. You got to tighten your net. The Bible says in Jude 20, but you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, I almost went back and said the Holy Ghost right there. But praying in the Holy Spirit, watch this now. Jude wrote this in a way. He See, you cannot build if there's no foundation. Jude is written as though, watch this now, that you have faith in Christ and you know who Christ is. You know that he is the rock, that he is your foundation. He is your sure foundation. And therefore, we need to be building our faith on God right now, understanding that, God, you are only allowing us to go through a season. But I'm not worried about this season. I'm trusting in you. I'm building my faith in this moment. Why do you say that? Because even Isaiah 28 and 16 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation. A tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes, watch this, will not act hastily. Oh, my God, I said something there. Because what is the Lord saying? God said, listen, if you really know who he is, that you ain't going to sit up here and be so concerned by what's going on. You will do the things that you need to do to be responsible in this situation. But you will trust your God to get you out of this situation. You won't act hastily. What is hastily? Hastily is when you run to the grocery store and buy everything on the shelf. <laughs> Acting like it's not going to change. Can you tell somebody it's going to change? It's not going to always be this way. Why would you buy 20 rolls of tissue and you're the only one in the house? Save it for somebody else. We say we trust God, but do we? And somebody that's been through something in your life, can you tell somebody he's an excellent foundation? When you put your faith in God and you know you can stand, you don't worry about things. You can be secure when you're tight in your faith. You can walk and do the things that God has called you to do. Understand, I'm not asking you to be foolish or presumptuous. You need to wash your hands. You need to wash your hands. You need to clean your house. You need to wash the doorknobs. 
Because why? We got elderly folks, and we want to make sure they don't get infected because we are strong and we can get through it. We need to make sure everybody gets through it. Come on, give God praise. I'm going to talk to you today. We need to prepare ourselves for the blessings God have in our lives. If we are believing, if we believe things will change and God will bless us, we must do an act of faith. We must. The simple things that we're being asked to do is an act of faith. That we know things will change. It will not always be this way. Number two, number two, number two. You must deepen your faith. You must deepen your faith. The Bible says in verses 3 and 4, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. Uh, we better know him as Peter. And asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. See, see we, we, we must deepen our faith. And he says, launch out into the deep and let your nets down in the same place for a catch today. Now, now, now listen to this because God will test you with little <laughs> before he can trust you with much. Yeah, come on, give him praise. They were, they were on, the, on the beach tightening their nets. Jesus get into one of the boats. He said, push out a little bit. Let me talk to you. Let me teach you something. Let me give you some word. You, you need some word. Jesus, Jesus was a calm preacher. Just talk to people. And he's talking to them, helping them to understand their faith. And then he teaches them a lesson based on the word that he is teaching them. He gives them something practical. He says now, watch this now, launch out to the deep. See, see, they were in one of the boats, comfortable. Tell your neighbor, comfortable. They were comfortable in the shadow. And God says, launch out into the deep, let your nest down for a catch. T.D. Jake says something. I've been on an internet or, or a social media fast. I just put myself on it. And I stayed away from it, but because of the information that we were sending out and wanting everyone to know what's going on with church and things of that nature, I ran across this. It says this, T.D. Jake says, a call from God will always be a disruption to your comfort. I said, thank you, Jesus. I got to add that in there. Because, see, here's the thing. Some of us, we're comfortable, watch this now, spread out like this. And I told the ushers, I said, listen, when they come, it's not going to be as packed as it normally is. Let them spread out. Let them be where they can worship. Let those, watch this, who are staying home watching through the internet feel that they are part of worship. Let them know that they are just as important today as those that are here and they have just as much faith as those that are here. Why? Because we got to recognize sometimes we got to get into a comfort zone only for God to pull us out of the comfort zone. Woo, preach, Kearney. What do you mean? Because the season is going to change. It may not change today. It may not change tomorrow. It may not change next week, but the season will change where we got to launch back out in the deep and get comfortable being in a crowd and doing what God has said. Today may not be the day. Tell somebody today. Ain't, matter of fact, the day ain't the day today. Ain't the day. Ain't the day. Ain't the day. But we got the lunch back because that word lunch means, listen to this, to lead upon a ship upon the deep to put out, to lead back, to return. See, we got to understand God ain't going to always, he's not going to leave things as they are. Things will change. But you got to deepen your faith. You got to know that God, listen now, you got to know that God is true to whatever God says he will do. And what God said to them was, let down your net deepen Go to the deep, launch out there, and let down your nets for a catch. Wait a minute. I can't catch nothing in the shallow. No, you can't catch it. 
in the shadow. I'm going to teach you in the shadow. <laughs> but I need you to experience it in the deep. Preach, Kearney. Because see, some of us, we need to recognize this is where we got to deepen our faith. We got to deepen our prayer life. We got to reach down deep and find joy and find peace. Because see, if we think we're going to get deep, we're going to get the joy in a shadow place. I'm sorry. That's only a place of comfort. Well, we got to get you into a place now where you're not always in control, but you can get to a place where you always know God is in control. That when you're in the deep, God will give you an experience that you could never have experienced in a shadow place. What do you mean? Because in Psalm 71, 21, it says it this way. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side, Woo. which means that God got me on every side. God has me in every situation. God doesn't just have me when I got a job. God has me when I don't have a job. God doesn't just have me when things are going the way I think they ought to go. Sometimes, God, watch it now, God has me all the time, but God has me even when things are not working out like I planned it to work. We got to know that God has us covered on every side. Can you tell somebody every side? So you know me in the shadow, but now you got to know me in the deep. See, I, I recognize that some of us because we're contractors, we may not have a job next week. But watch this now. Don't you give up. You got to watch this now. You got to learn in the shadow and then experience God in the deep place. Am I talking to anybody? God will still bless you, but you got to go to the deep. You got to go to your prayer closet. You got to get to a place where you hear God. You got to unplug from the news stations. Woo, because you already know what to do. I'm preaching up in here. You already know what to do. Tell somebody you know what to do. But now you got to get in the deep place and hear God. We're not going through all of this not to get a breakthrough. Somebody need to know you're not stuck here. And if the devil is telling you this is where it's going to be, this is your new normal, no, this is only temporary. And I'm trusting God to bring us beyond these circumstances. We always say Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean, into your, lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Well, the only way you're going to know this is sometimes you got to go through something where you really got to trust God and not depend on yourself and your tools but say God I just believe you in the midst of this so God I'm thankful that you're directing our path I'm thankful God that you're calling us out of shadow waters into the deep <laughs> I believe God that you, you chose us not to remain broken uh, <laughs> there are, are some seeds in our lives when watch this now when things go away but we serve a God that can make it right again. Oh, come on, give him praise right there. Yeah. Psalms 147 and 3 says, he heals the brokenhearted and bounds up, binds up their wounds. So you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, you got to have a deep faith and even those that are watching via internet, you got to have a deep faith now. You got to pray. You got to get in your prayer closet. And you got to trust God because listen now, if not, you get so inundated with all of this information that if it's not handled correctly, it will drag you down, but you, it should inspire you. It should inspire you. When you mix it with the word of God, it is to inspire you to do what God is calling you to do right now. God's word says, go to the deep and let your nets down for a catch. Let your nets down for a catch. Point three, sow your faith as evidence of trust and reap a harvest. Ooh. Yeah. Sow your faith as evidence of trust and reap a harvest. Wait a minute. Verse five. Now, this is where I saw something again that I had not seen before until now. Simon answered and said to him, Master, 
We've talked all night. Nevertheless, there it is. At your word, I will let down the net. I got to apologize to Simon because I said something I shouldn't have said some time ago, and I'll get it straight, and I'll tell you in a minute. And they, watch this, and they had done this. They caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled. Tell, tell somebody they signal. They signaled their partners in the boat uh, and the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled not just one boat, but both the boats so that they began to sink. They sold their faith as evidence of trust and they reaped a harvest. Wait a minute. He says, he said, nevertheless, at your word, I'm tired. We, we fished all night, didn't catch anything. It was disappointing last night. For many of us, this has been a very disappointing week, a very disappointing two weeks. But in understanding this, we, we've gone through that. We tell somebody we've gone through that. You got Jesus on the boat now. And he says, listen now, drop your nets in the deep place and get ready to catch something. And watch what Peter says. Peter says, listen, Lord, Lord, we toiled all night. We caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I let down the net. Now, here's where I got to apologize to Peter. Jesus asked for all the nets to be dropped. Peter only had a net in his boat. See, we preach it like this, that Peter was disobedient. Peter wasn't disobedient. Peter dropped what he had. Preach, Kearney. Sometimes we got to recognize, look, you got to stop judging people and looking at them. You got to recognize they're doing what they, get, they can do, and this is all they got. Preach up in here, Kearney. What are you saying? Somebody got to understand you can't look at somebody that's going through something you have already conquered and saying, listen now, why, don't, why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that? No, you got to let them praise God the best way they can praise them right now. Some are praising him at home and some had faith to come to church as well. They're praising God with all they got. They're trusting God with all they got. They're trusting God in their homes. We're trusting God here. It's no difference because we got to recognize God, I'm giving you all I got right here. But what I love about the Lord that God is truthful to his word. Because he got to understand that even where I failed last night, God can do a great work in my life today. And even where I didn't trust him the other day, he has helped building my trust today. Why? Because the word says in Psalm 73 and 26, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. He's our strength that's why we can take him at his word. That's why we know this is not always going to last. God will strengthen us in days like these. We got to hear the voice of God. Listen, look at your neighbor and say, hear the voice of God. Which means that you got to drop your nets. When God asks you to drop your net, you got to drop your net. You can't talk about what you didn't catch last night. When they drop their nets... I saw something that blessed me. Verse 7 and I'm done. They dropped the nets. According to verse 6, it was so great of a catch that the nets start breaking. The nets start breaking. <laughs> and they recognized they couldn't contain all this by themselves. So they had to lift their hands and yell out and signal the other brothers who was with the boat at the beach to come out and help them. Why? Because the catch was so big that when they listened to the word of God and dropped the net, they caught what God said was in the deep place. Preach, Kearney. What are you saying, Kearney? So you got to understand something here. They were using one net or one hand to hold the net. They were using the other hand.
to bring people out to help them. And they were yelling with a loud voice for people to come and help. Can I say something here? See, sometimes you got to let people know how good your God is when they've gone through a terrible experience. Preach up in here. You got to hold the net with one hand and say, y'all need to hurry up and get out here because not only is God blessing me, but he has enough blessings over here for everybody. And I'm going to tell you how good God is. I reached down and came back up with enough joy to share with everybody. See, you have to raise your hand, which is signaling to them that everything is all right. And it's just like God said it would be. There ought to be a hallelujah in your spirit when you know that God has been good in your life. You ought to signal to somebody that your God is still good. That's why Psalms 134, 2 says, lift your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. You got to recognize that lifted hand. Sometimes all I got is one hand. I was watching some of y'all in praise and worship. You didn't have both hands, but you were taking that one. And some people don't know what you're holding on to, but, but you're holding on to something that God said. While you're waving that one, you got to believe here, church. You got to sow your faith as evidence and reap the harvest that God said you could have. And let me say this to some of you don't buy, don't be listening to all these false prophets out there. Like Jim Baker getting you to buy oil for. The coronavirus, that is, that's an act of false prophecy. And God will deal with him for that. We do not allow people to take advantage of us. That's why we got to trust God and get a word from him in this season. Don't be listening to people just talking about, well, the, this, the, the Lord is so angry and mad at the church and mad at, at this a judgment against the world. No, God has already judged us. He allowed his son to die on the cross for all of our sins. He has already judged us. And then if they say, well, he's angry at you. Okay. He's been angry at me before. But I know a little word. Psalms 30 and 5 says, for his anger is but for a moment. Oh, but I like that comma right there. His favor is for life. <laughs> Anything a moment means it won't last. Talk to me, somebody. And we got to come through this season understanding what we're dealing now. It won't last because we have fav the favor of God for the rest of our lives. And oh, don't, don't, forget about, don't forget about that B clause. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus showed up in the morning time and said, drop your net. I know last night wasn't good, but drop your nets today. So that's the same thing with many of us. We might be in a night season, but it's not going to always last this way. But we have to do the things that are necessary. We can't give up. Because I hear so many saying, this is it. <laughs> the devil is a liar. God still got some work in me to do. Come on, somebody. And he still got something for you to do. And what we have to understand that this season, we can't give up. We have to have faith. You got to be a good steward over the word that God is placing in you. You got to work the word. So this is how we're going to do this today. I want you to just stand wherever you are. And I want to speak to you and those who are watching via internet. Because you need to be encouraged. This too will pass. But you got to trust God. You got to declutter your net. You got to take the information you get, make it useful and do what God is calling us to do. 
But we need to be prayerful and understand that, watch this, that everything God is asking me to do, I need to follow it because there's a blessing on the other side of it. And I want to say this to you. You don't have to come up here and shake our hands. You, you can just receive Jesus Christ wherever you are right now. Whether you're on the internet, whether you're in the seats here, and immediately after service, if you want to come up and go straight in those rooms and give your life to Christ, that's what you do today. If you don't have a church home and God is leading you to be a part of this church home, just walk up here and just go straight through the room at the end of service. And then those that are watching via internet, if you're not saved, I'm getting ready to pray with you and ask God to forgive you your sins and lead you to Christ as well as those that are in here today. And you can call the phone number that's on the internet that others might lead you to uh, accept you and help you understand what you have done in accepting Christ as your Savior. Then you must also understand those of you who are watching may need a church home. And you feel that the Lord is leading you to become part of New Mercies. Just call here and there will be people that will help you make New Mercies your church home. And so wherever you are, I just need you to bow your heads wherever you are. And just repeat after me, even if you're saved, that those who are around you may hear it and they too will understand that they need to give their life to Christ. Father Jesus, Father, forgive us for the things that we've done. Matter of fact, Lord, forgive me for the, th for the things I've done. I know that I am a sinner, but I know Lord, that you can save me through your son, Jesus Christ. You said, if I confess and believe that I can be saved, I believe today that as, as I confess my sins, you, Lord, will save me. I believe today that as I say I believe in Jesus, you, Lord, will save me. Therefore, God, I can say through my confession, I am saved. I, I accept it. I believe it. I am saved today. You said, Lord, through the Apostle Paul, to be absent from the body is to wake up with the Lord. And I know, God, when I transition from here, I will wake up with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise for that. Remember, if you're in here and you prayed that prayer for the first time, you can just go into the rooms right over here and people will talk to you about your confession in Christ. If you prayed it for the first time via internet, you can call the phone number that is on the website and people will talk to you about your confession and what you have done and giving your life to Christ. If you need a church home, just make sure you come immediately at the service. This, again, is how we're working with you so you can feel comfortable in doing what God is telling you to do. Come on, give God praise for those that made the confession. You may be seated. Now, also what we're doing, we're doing offering a little different today. We're going to allow you to bring your offering to the altar if you have written offerings. So if you need an offering envelope, just raise, if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand high and an usher will bring one to you. While you're preparing your offering envelopes and your tithing, your giving, understand that there are seven ways you can give here at New Mercies again. And I'm waiting on them to put them up there because I don't have the sheet in front of me. Janae, give me that sheet right there, please, for offering. Thank you. Remember, there are seven ways. Last week, we learned how important it was to be a sower as God has given you the seed to sow. Number one, those of you that are watching online, you can give by going to newmercycc.org. Number two, those of us that have our mobile devices, you can go to the mobile app and hit the Give tab. Number three, those of us who, again, have our mobile devices, you can go to the Cash app, use dollar sign, New Mercies CC. 
some of us we're here today that's i like doing we sow here at the church you can just raise your hand and usher will give you an envelope and you can fill it out during service then as we're leaving you can use the kiosk in the vestibule some of us can text uh new mercy excuse me nmcc 273256 and then some of us already use auto pay where there's an automatic withdrawal coming from our payroll so we do those things because we recognize that ministry must go on tell your neighbor ministry must go on y'all quiet now ministry must go on lights must be paid mortgage needs to be paid things we have to do staff needs to be paid amen we need to take care of those come on give god praise staff member going yeah amen amen the band need to be paid praise and worship leaders so we need to take care of them amen and so so i'm asking us to be faithful in our giving and our tithing also let me remind you a couple of announcements camp dates and hours remember we have camp vantage that is coming and you can register now on the internet the camp times will be Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Uh, it will begin May 26th through January, excuse me, through July 31st. Camp ages is five, fifth, yeah, five through 13. Grades are K through eighth. The maximum amount of kids we're taking is 150 kids. Registration cost is $250. And I explained to you all what all you get there, the cost of all tri eight trips, cost of food, and trips uh, for the trips and shirts, bags with child's name, office supplies, towels with child's name, Vance sneakers. We're asking that you register by April 19th and receive a $35 off on your first and second week of camp. Registration is open today. Amen. Also, uh, worshiping with us today is Brenda Lopez Romero and she's running for Congress, so please stand. Come on, give God praise for her. Thank you for worshiping with us today. And so we will be praying for you to do well, amen. Come on, give God praise for her, amen. All right, I'm gonna do two things here now, two things. The first thing I'm gonna do is pray and bless our tithe and our offerings and giving, amen. And then the second thing I'm going to do is give us the benediction. I'm going to give the benediction from here because, again, if I go out there and shake hands, then some of y'all get the funny. Things to assist in us being comfortable. So I'll just stand up here and wave at everybody. And so, so some I came down and we threw the bowls, and that's fine. But at this time, I ask everyone to stand. I'm going to pray two prayers here. All right, every head is bowed. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you again, God, for us to be mindful that in this season, with the information that we're getting, we're to be inspired to do the things you are calling for us to do. And God, not that we will make light of these things because these things are necessary. And we pray, God, that we have ears to hear. But understand, God, that we are not to be people of fear, but we're to be people of faith. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Trusting you, God, to do the things you said you would do. And Lord, I pray that as we stand together and we have sown seed today, that you would take these seeds and multiply them. Multiply them back to the giver, God, as you have said in your word. We trust you to be faithful. And then, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will be with us as we go from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Let every heart say amen, 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 amen. and amen. God bless you. Go in peace, and may the peace of God be with you. You can bring your offerings to the altar.
Yeah.